Look who uploaded a video in the first week of January. It was at this moment that she knew she fucked up. Am I doing my resolutions right or not? Yeah, it's 11th of Jan today, so maybe not. Anyway, happy 2025. Oh my god, it's a new year again. Hi, I am Pooja Bhomik. Today I will tell you about the initial tech stack that I'm using to build my build in public solo project management app focused on ADHD users. And I know, I know, I'm uploading a video after two months, but well, I was living life. I went to Finland to see the Northern Lights, went to Switzerland, I did paragliding, I chilled on a yacht in Goa, I went to weddings, I went to Deaf Fest. So yeah, I didn't have a lot of time to work on the app or do a video in the last two months, but here I am back to it now. So let's talk about the first thing in the tech stack, which is the front-end framework. Well, the app will be available in Android and iOS and I'm hoping to add desktop support too. So obviously it is important for me to use a framework that has multi-platform support. So obviously without any surprises, <laughs> I am going to be using, any guesses? Flutter for this as it allows you to build once and deploy to multiple platforms. I mean, I have a day job that sometimes becomes my night job too, so I don't have a lot of time to build separately for different platforms and I want to reach the users as soon as possible. So this leads me to another tool I'll be using to speed things up, Flutterflow. I have been working for and using Flutterflow for two years now and I don't think I can go back to writing everything from scratch anymore. Flutterful lets you build Flutter apps in a visual development environment. There's a lot of drag and drop visual building, but I can also write Flutter code for the complex stuff directly in Flutterflow. Of course, every tool can have its limitations and if I ever get stuck or limited by it in the future, I can always switch to traditional coding then rather than now. By that time, I'll already have a good enough architecture with most of the features in place. So it seems future proof to me. So yeah, for front end, I'm going to be using Flutter and Flutter Flow. Next comes authentication. For authentication, I'm mostly going to be using Google and Apple OAuth authentication. I generally don't like email auth as a user because it is time consuming. So definitely not email password auth as of now. I also don't want users to give their phone number. So probably not even phone auth. Maybe I will need anonymous authentication at some point. So I need a service that can provide uh, OAuth and anonymous authentication providers. For options, obviously I looked at both Firebase and Superbase and both of them have support in Flutterflow as well. So that was idle for me instead of looking for other services. Cost wise for 50K monthly active users, they both are no cost for the free plan. And once I reach 50K, I may want to switch to Superbase if the Firebase pricing does not reduce because for 50K more users, I would need to pay $0.0055 per user, which is kind of $500 or something if my understanding is correct. And for Superbase, I just have to switch to the pro plan, which is $25 and I get 100 K monthly active users for free. And after 100K, there is a charge. But honestly, even 50K is really, really, really far for me. So I don't think that it matters for a very long time. So yeah, I'm going to be settling with Firebase authentication for now. Next up is the backend database. So I was clear at the beginning that I needed a relational database for this app the relationships between the projects, the milestone, the tasks and the community comments can be well structured into tables and the relationships can be efficiently managed using the foreign keys in a relational database. Also, PostgreSQL is flexible enough because it lets you use JSON fields for storing less structured or variable data, which kind of provides me the benefits of NoSQL when needed. So. However, NoSQL databases like Firestore could be useful for the community feature that is handling comments with high read and write traffic. Um, but PostgreSQL should work unless there's a significant spike in traffic. 
If high traffic becomes an issue for the community feature in the future, I can still consider integrating Firestore especially for that feature while keeping the rest of the app in PostgreSQL. So yeah, my data is going to be stored in Superbase for now. Next up is push notifications and as an app that is focused on ADHD users, reminders would be very, very helpful. So push notifications is going to be something that we are going to be incorporating a lot. Uh, so I think for push notifications, FCM is one of the most popular services and it's completely no cost. So I think there were no second thoughts to this at these initial stages. I can look at one signal and all later when the user base grows or if I find significant limitations with FCF. But for now, I think I'm going to go with Firebase here. Next up is storage. And I can tell you that this was one of my most confusing decisions yet. Um, I still don't know what's better between Firebase or Superbase storage, especially after Firebase removed the free storage tier. Though I can still get a free tier with up to 5 GB storage, 1 GB downloads per day and 20K uploads per day if I use the US region buckets. But my Firebase bucket originally is set to Mumbai. I chose Mumbai because I feel like I may get more local users than users from other countries in the beginning. So it should reduce the latency. At least that's what I think about my future audience. I'm still not entirely sure. But with Superbase, I only have one GB free on the basic tier. And then on the pro plan, which is $25, I get 100 GB free and then around $0.021 per GB. Now, I think 1GB is too less for now, so I may be going with Firebase, but I think after a few usage and some users, I will have a better idea and then can switch services if required. Since it is storage, I think it should be easy to switch, but we will see. Next up, of course, the AI models that I will go with. Uh, now, in my app, there are certain AI features. There's a lot of AI features, in fact. Uh, so I would want to experiment between Gemini 1.5 Flash, Gemini 1.5 Pro and GPT-40 and see how they respond to the prompts in the app. I may be doing a feature flag of sorts to see how these models are performing against my prompts in the app. But cost wise, Gemini gives a better offer as it has a free tier up to a certain limit. And I think GPT-40 doesn't. Even after the limit, the costs are less in comparison, but I think uh, in terms of audio processing, GPT-40 may perform better. So again, this is still not decided yet. I will have a better idea once I have some production user data process and I review them for accuracy. So yeah, finally, I have not decided, but I will be experimenting between Gemini and GPT. And lastly, for collab functions and analytics, I will be going with Firebase for now as I have not given much thought to it yet and it has native support in front of her as well and it is one of the more popular choices so that works for me all right so that's all the services and indications that i have thought about uh, or will be using in the near future in my app maybe later after some users uh, some data i can make an update video on this to see how my choices have treated me uh, but i'm really hoping to have the first version ready for testing soon so I can start using my own app to track things better and avoid getting distracted so easily every time. Uh, and I'm hoping you will be ready with your app idea so you can help me test the app too. Anyway, see you soon and a happy, happy new year.